Hello, everyone. Welcome to Code Jam. So, it's, um, Melody, what's up? I'm very good. Kenichi, how's it been? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So, today we'll be introducing um, Code Jam to you. Um, awesome and awesome stuff. And um, we'll talk about, um, get to share with you our background and then discuss what Code Jam is all about. And then, um, give our marker, right? <laughs> so uh, first, I'll go first, then Melody. Um, I'm a techie, right? So uh, anything that has to be tech, just call me. I'm, I'm always there like two for seven. So I started my career, I, I think, in school, um, embedded system. I was so excited. I was, I was able to like program hardware and all that. So when I got there, I started to just, you know, keep doing this. I started learning different languages. And then um, here I am still doing tech. So my name, my name is Kelechi Oliver, uh, and I'm a software engineer currently doing um, full stack. I'm currently doing full stack at Cognify. Sorry, I'm doing full, um, full stack. Currently, I'm doing full stack at Gadad here, and I'm doing DevOps at Cognify. Though sometimes I still do write code and all that because, like, I love this stuff, man. So, um, so that's it. And um, my hobbies, um, I like, uh, I like playing football and uh maybe working out <laughs> but because of code i've not been able to play football for a while now yeah so that's that's a bit about me melody what about you uh awesome uh, that's a very nice background i i am a software engineer uh so kelechi happens to be uh should i say my best friend uh or my only one of my only friends i have so i'm a very strong introvert i don't like going out at all <laughs> and i write code so javascript is my main stack i write a lot of javascript i use node.js for the back end and i write uh, react for the front end and just to show you how much javascript i write i still write vanilla, vanilla js on the front end i happen to be a full stack engineer uh, not just javascript i only write elixir and uh, i know a bit of rust and python and I started my career with embedded systems back in school, where Kelechi happened to be my uh, roommate and equally, you know, uh, friend and an awesome friend for that. And it's been a very good ride. I currently work with uh, IPM Scaltech as a full stack engineer, uh, but I mostly write front end code. Uh, so yeah, that's a bit of a bit about me. About my hobbies, actually, I love watching movies. I love movies. I could watch movie all week. And I love to hang out with my cats when I have the time, which is like always. So if I don't have the time, she has the time for me and she will disturb the hell out of me. So I have a beautiful cat called Jennifer and she's a blessing to me. So yeah. <laughs> Wow, cool, 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 cool. So, um, yeah, so Melody and I were roommates, we were roommates and it was amazing because we were doing the same thing. So we had the same um, kind of, you know, plan. Be like, oh, today let's go study. Let's like when he's learning a new language, and I'm like, oh, so, guy, what's this? Are you learning this? And I'm like, it's like, yeah, I just started this, and I'll be like, oh, sure, I'm definitely learning that. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> so we started from um, then. I was, I was, we were learning C, and then. We started from learning C, we started learning C sharp. We're using C for embedded system, right? Doing um, Arduinos and all, all those prototyping stuff back in school. So we started learning C and then we started from C, we started doing C++ and then we're building um, Windows apps. And we noticed it was a bit difficult with C++ and we then started doing C sharp. And then from C sharp, we migrated all the way to the land of JavaScript. <laughs> and from JavaScript, we ended there, our careers, even though we were doing other languages, we were writing other languages, like he was doing Elixir, me, um, I was doing a bit of Rust, uh, but I was, we still, um, we worked day to day with JavaScript and all that. Okay, so um, let's talk about Code Jam. What is Code Jam, right? So um, have you ever thought of it like, like it would be nice if you could share ideas with people around freely, you could have a live session where people could and um, you, they, they show you their mistakes because most times thing is we watch videos on YouTube. I um, I watch videos on YouTube, like tech videos on YouTube, like, you know, courses and all that. And the thing with those courses is um, it's scripted. They've already gone through the issues and they're just giving you the, um, you know, the courses directly, right? So, well, now let's create something where 
these things are not scripted. We come and we face the issues, we face the bugs, and we fix it live, right? So we're able to connect with um, tech-minded people are able to connect together um, in, a, in a given um, platform, right? So what we plan to be doing is we'll be creating videos, we'll be um, showing you how to um, build stuff, really pretty, pretty awesome stuff around tech, um, several other things. But the major thing here is just creating a community around um, tech enthusiasts and lovers of tech and all that, right? It's mostly, though we're technical, but we're, we're trying as much to make it um, also beginners friendly, those who are trying to get in, right? So when you find people around you who are doing these things, then it's, I think the reality, it comes closer, the reality is closer, like you find any real persons you know you can talk to, how are you doing these things? They can, you know, explain that to you. I think that's what Code Jam is all about. So, um, uh, Melody and I would always come on, would um, share with you um, new things, new ideas we'll learn. We'll have um, talks, we'll have um, like um, a code together, live coding sessions and all that. I think um, Melody would be, would be able to explain more. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I've always loved the idea of, uh, you know, learning from people who I could get feedback from. And as a beginner, you know, when I started my software engineering career, I... I found it difficult understanding certain concepts. And that was because I was watching YouTube content, right? I couldn't ask questions. I had this time where I reached out to this, uh, this content creator or this uh, tutor on YouTube or via his uh, Twitter about this very thing. I think it was around contests or something like that, React contest. And he did not reply me for about nine months. It was that crazy, nine months. and. By the time he replied me, I was already like senior in that thing. Like I was already a pro or something in that thing. So I think uh, the the general idea of code jam, you know, brings brings this uh, you know this community of persons where ideas could be shared, and you get an a, a first hand experience and not just you don't feel left alone. You don't feel like okay, this thing is too far uh, reached from me. I could I can't reach this thing. Uh, it's just there for you. You're seeing people do uh make mistakes because uh the, the general concept around this is that we would not be scripting this in any way we would not be prefer preparing beforehand so the idea is uh get a topic uh come to the platform and try to give you what we've learned over the years and uh you know our professional experiences and for sure every every other person is uh welcome to come and uh contribute as well so we we get contributions from from participants like you and every other person and it will be very awesome trust me very awesome yeah so um it's just about it like um to add to that like um when you when you i think majorly for me the challenge i had with those was the it, it's it's a bit far like though i benefited from watching those youtube in fact they are great like you know they're going to take you step by step and all that but i feel like we should have more reality um um sessions where we get to show you the mistakes right so software engineering is all about making mistakes and then moving finding a way to move away from it right so if you if, if you noticed one thing most times when you watch watch tutorial videos just like that it's totally good and it's fine right while you're trying to do the same thing you wrote the same code exactly as it was written and you notice yeah. that you're running into box you're just blocked because this person did the same thing and they're getting a different result it Good results rather and you're getting a different, totally different results and you're like what happened right so we, we we're creating this uh we're creating code jam to like you know have a reality session like a real session where we we'll get to explain to you we will get to go through the hustle hustle like show the um, go through the bugs and you know it's not more about talking like me <laughs> i don't like talking I actually like coding but uh i decided to just try to talk a bit because i I have that interest where I want, I want to help people coming out new. Like, so I remember for me, um, I was inspired by the friends I had because I was lucky enough to be in the midst of guys who were smart. So like Melody is one of them. <laughs> so um, um, I learned from them. <laughs> so most of the time when I have issues, I would just, you know, talk to them and, you know, sometime um, I, I would also uh, maybe Google around, but if I could have that, uh, had it been then, I had that um, environment, I had that community where I see people coding life. I think I'll be more like it'd be more um, helpful. It'd be quicker for me because 
I see them go through issues and I, I've seen how they resolve it. I'm not like thinking that, oh, I think this person who created this video is way, way more smarter than me. That's not the case. The people that created those videos, they went through those bugs as you just die in the videos. They try to prevent you from seeing those. They just go directly to the point. Maybe if they're having system issues, um, issues relating to their system or issues relating to some packages, not compiling properly, they will switch. You're not aware of those. All you, all you see is mostly the direct code and the end result, right? So the major purpose of Code Jam is most times we would come because uh, we're both working, we come on Saturdays, um, bi-weekly, would um, build something together. And it's life. We're not doing any scripted work where we'll pick a topic. Let's say we want to talk about next year. We want to talk about what storybooks are. We want to talk about any new library or thing we, we, we find interesting. We'll come here, we'll, you know, build it. We'll make mistakes together and we'll correct ourselves, like, right? So that way we're able to learn not just the language or framework, we're able to learn how to work as a software engineer, knowing that you run through box and knowing how to unlock yourself. So one story, one thing for me is I ex experienced was um, when I when I started out, um, when I had issues, bugs, I, I always freak out, right? I'll be struggling, like, how would I fix this? But as time goes on, I keep having bugs and I keep fixing it. Now, when I have new bugs, I just chill. I just um, go outside, buy, you know, <laughs> buy something nice and I just chill because I know that when I come back, I can, you know, um, check Stack Overflow and there's surely a way to fix it, right? So building that confidence in yourself is really important, even for interviews, right? So when you have that confidence in yourself where you're able to unblock yourself, you're able to have that mindset that definitely you have bugs and bugs are not like your enemy. They help you be stronger, like they help you learn more. You'll see that uh, even in interviews, you're able to excel because they'll ask you questions that like things you don't know. They'll ask you questions that you would only um, experience those things if you've run through bugs, right? Um, so um, I think that's majorly what Code Jam is all about. So I'm super excited to be uh, to be doing this with Melody, and I, I'm sure he is as well. So we're looking to dedicate a lot of time to this. We're looking to um, build a community around this. Yeah, I think Kalechi has said it all. I I like you know it's it's super great uh, you know knowing that these senior engineers or people you consider very senior Google little mistakes or very basic things like. Sometimes you see a senior Googling how to center a div and probably how to, uh, you know, iterate through, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, an array or best case scenario on how to, you know, flatten a, an array or a, an object or something like that. So seeing that life would actually, uh, you know, boost just your, your understanding and, uh, you know, your, I think your confidence and it's, it's, it's an awesome one. Uh, get into be in this session and you know have these multiple sessions that are going to come on with uh, Kalichi Oliver. Yeah, so guys, um, just uh, you'll be getting more from us. You'll be getting more videos, more exciting stuff. This is our first stream, and uh, though it might be a bit, <laughs> this might be a big yeah, glitch, but yeah, uh, time we don't we'll get... yeah, but we we are planning on a, uh, getting you know a better quality out there for you. And a better streaming quality and everything. So, uh, yeah. forgive us, forgive us our sins. We'll do better. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do you mind giving your marker? So, marker is like, um, because we work bi weekly, so within two weeks period, you must have found something new, something exciting in tech, something maybe a new, um, a new library or, you know, anything you found new and you think you'd share it, you would like to share it. So, that's what marker is going forward. So, Melody, would you mind giving your marker? Yeah, awesome. I have been uh, very interested with SolidJS recently, and I I kind of uh, SolidJS has been existing for a long time now, and not a long time, but for a while. But recently, uh, you know, I started looking out outside the React school because React, from the way I see React, React is like kind of buggy, if you ask me. Not really buggy, but uh, I think the the creators of uh, the creator uh, of SolidJS was like, with what we know now, there are, there are a lot of things we can do better, and that is what SolidJS tends to do. So SolidJS uses the uh, actual DOM rendering. So SolidJS is actually a library in uh, JavaScript. Uh, React is also a library in JavaScript, and React 
does this thing where it does a virtual DOM uh, rendering and it then updates the actual DOM. So what happens is this, you have a virtual DOM and you have an actual DOM, which is your browser DOM, right? And if you write a code, right, it's your, 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 it, it updates your virtual DOM, right? And okay. then your virtual DOM goes ahead to update your actual DOM if I'm not getting it wrong. Uh, however, SolidJS goes directly to update your actual DOM. And not just that, it it's reduces this ambiguity of, uh, you know, uh, DOM re-rendering as well. So there's so much DOM re-rendering in React, if you've noticed that. Have you used the reuse effects before? And if you sure. added wrong dependencies to it, you see that everything keeps rendering and rendering. And you see, it's it's only in React where you have uh, this huge memory leak, and you have to be very, 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 very thorough to avoid memory leaks in React and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if you've used SolidJS or if you've like. No, I, I've not. I've not tried. I've not tried SolidJS. So, but like, what will make me? What? Why would I want to use SolidJS? Are there are there like added advantage? Yeah, with SolidJS. So, first off, uh, there's a comparison with SolidJS and a bunch of other libraries and. SolidJS is almost as fast as your vanilla JavaScript. Okay. So uh, this is a test run. I could have loved to probably go to the documentation and uh, spawn up, you know, an instance where we compare a React and a SolidJS. Uh, but you okay. see that uh, when you write a code, like let's say for instance, if you have a chart component in React and your chart components updates and you don't write a very efficient code, what happens? Yeah. It probably uh, causes your your uh, your parent component to re-render. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that that triggers a whole re-rendering of your parent component and stuff like that. And depending on how much uh, your components are, like it could trigger a rendering. And sometimes there's no way you can avoid that. Okay. But in Solid, your components render once, render just once. Then you have these things called, uh, uh, I think they call it. Uh, is it subscriptions or oh, I've totally forgotten what they call it, but it's like a, you subscribe event. They are like event listeners. So you subscribe to these events and yeah. any other thing that changes in that, uh, in that, you know, whole library or, you know, in that code, it just hits that event alone. So only that component gets re-rendered. Okay. Not just the component. It goes finally to making it sometimes only just that portion of code gets re-rendered. So it doesn't rerun everything all, all, all over again. So you have this really optimized code. And I'll frankly tell you this, I'm looking forward to building something very crazy with SolidJS. <laughs> with SolidJS, cool, cool. Yeah. I've, I've not had to like exploit, you know, when you're, what, that's one of the challenges. When you're working, you are just stick to one library, uh, especially one used by the company. So like, you're just doing that. Like for a while now, I've just been doing next years and you know, sometimes you get bored. It's just <laughs> just with the <laughs> next years and all that. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. yeah, so me myself as a person, I, I do front end very well, but I, recently I'm losing interest in front end, but I still love front end, you know. So <laughs> so I, um it, it could be uh, CSS chasing you or this tiny tiny thing. No. Like it's very boring for me. Yeah, sometimes it just it just gets tiring, right? So when you're trying to figure out style issues, and you're like, you're like, this is this is a very simple stuff. I just want to send that this text. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely relate to that. Yeah. So I'll just give my marker. Um, well, my marker my marker is around something. My marker is around something very common. So chat GPT. I think uh, those guys did an amazing stuff, right? So usually. When I'm when I'm faced with issues, I'm trying to do something. It's Stack Overflow. In fact, I even tell Google, Google, I need to search on Stack Overflow. Like by let's say I want to know how to um, write a script to do a do, write a script that uh, a Docker file that deploys a Python project, right? So what I'll do is I'll instruct um, Google to get that result from Stack Overflow, right? That's to tell you how dependent I was on Stack Overflow. <laughs> but recently. Chat GPT came and changed the show, right? So um, I would just go on Chat GPT and be like, "Can you generate um, um, a Docker file for a Python project?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, you can. This is a Python. This is a Docker file for a Python project." And that was so cool, like because with Stack Overflow, I would have to scroll through different um, answers, 
right? And I'll have to pick which one um, suits my need, right? That's good in some cases, but in some cases where you just need things really quick, I think um, uh, ChatGPT is doing, doing real good. Like, um, though sometimes the results generated uh, might not work as you expect, you have to like modify it a bit or ask more direct questions. But I think that's a tool you, like that's a really great tool, especially as a software engineer, it makes your work a bit faster, like if not just a bit faster, faster. Right. I remember um, recently last week I was trying to, so I had an image, you know, UI designers, we programmers and UI designers were like this. <laughs> when they yeah. finish designing, then you now start struggling. What was it taking when you did this? So the image I was given was facing right to left. Then uh, on the design, the image was first facing left to right. So I was like, oh, how would I, how would I do this? So I, I, I was using Tailwind. So I was try, I was using um, transform and rotate um, function uh, from Tailwind to try to rotate the image. But I can only rotate it um, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. So I wasn't getting what I want. That's um, vertically um, trying to align it from left to right, right, turning the other way around. Yeah. So I just asked ChatGPT and immediately I got a response and I just copied uh -huh. the... <laughs> And I pasted it, and the image turned. I was like, "Wow, super cool!" And I, I stretched my leg and, you know, raised my PR, and that was it for it. So, you know, I think um, ChatGPT is a tool. It's a good tool if you're, if you're a software engineer, you're a beginner, learn how to ChatGPT. It makes your life um, a lot more easier. Yep. Yeah, first of all, I use ChatGPT uh, quite a, a few times. I won't say often. I used it to solve one crazy bug uh, in my organization. Uh, it, yeah. we realized it was actually a future and ChatGPT helped me with that. Well, however, <laughs> I, I had a ChatGPT, not, not like I had, I actually read somewhere that what ChatGPT tried to do or how it was programmed to handle tasks is it tries to complete your next, uh, you know, guess. So what happens is if you're writing, hey, my name is Melody, I am a... So what ChatGPT is, was initially developed to complete what you want more like a okay. future kind of thing. And that's what it does, right? So when you type a question, it uses that same rationale, right? To give you answers of what you actually want. Yeah. And that, I think that was that was why Google wasn't easy to, you know, spin up something like ChatGPT. I, 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 I saw uh, Google stores go very down, you know, like very down when they yeah, made yeah. their presentation. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it's it's going to like you know with Stack Overflow now you see that the number of daily active users are it's going, just going to drastically reduce because uh, me I'm one of the users and right now I've not been I've not you know opened <laughs> Stack Overflow like you know sometimes okay this is how I do it I move from ChatGPT once I start getting a result from ChatGPT that maybe it's not working then I then go over to Stack Overflow so Stack Overflow is like a four but when ChatGPT doesn't give me what I want or maybe it's overloaded. Right, so, but well, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. ChatGPT works for me, like, almost all the time. I, I, I use it to generate codes, and sometimes I, I see that, sometimes it's, it just doesn't give you what you want, especially when you want to generate this long code. I am lazy developer. I'm a lazy developer. Like, I would rather go through the stress of, you know, not rewriting ton of code. So sometimes I try to see like, if I can generate a piece of code or a boiler template from ChatGPT yeah. and... When it doesn't, like when I try to prompt and prompt and prompt, it doesn't. I'll just, I'll just be like, oh, you know what? I'll write it myself. And yeah, so those are the points where I get to use ChatGPT a lot to, you know, generate a bunch of code and very technical things. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you so much. I think we had we we having a wonderful time here. Oh, we had a wonderful time here, and um, we're looking to um, think join back next week. Um, our first. Um, uh, we'll be giving our first talk next week. Uh, yeah. So until then, thank you guys. Yeah, for sure. It's nice having you guys. So take a nice one. Bye. Bye. Bye.